Hi everybody, today the topic of this video is how to celebrate small wins. Caregivers are often so busy that all you can do is think of all these tasks that you have to do and what's coming up tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. So in this video I will be sharing ideas for how caregivers and really anyone in life can celebrate small wins. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. My website's PamelaDWilson.com. Please click below to follow and share these videos with other people you know who are looking for hope, help, and support. There's also a lot of helpful information over on my website, PamelaDWilson.com. So if you are a caregiver or anybody who has so many tasks to do, you may be thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to possibly get all of this done? And if you're the caregiver, you may be just checking tasks off a list every day because you have this routine that you have to get to and it's it's almost like you're on autopilot right so there's not a lot of you know acknowledging the fact that hey i did this really great thing today for my loved one it's more like hey man i got the sheets changed and i did laundry and i went to the grocery store and i picked up prescriptions and i made dinner and i washed the floor and i gave my loved one a bath and blah 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 now, people in your family may be looking at you saying, wow, you're busy all the time. <laughs> because, of course, doing all these things becomes your sole focus, your sole priority, right? And they're saying, oh, you're always so busy. Well, what they're not offering to do is to help you, right? You're thinking, well, gosh, if you're saying that I'm always so busy, why don't you offer to help? Why don't you pitch in? And then maybe I wouldn't be so busy. So let's look at a couple of caregiving situations around this where there can be like misunderstandings and, and not good communication. So caregiving situation where say one spouse is a primary caregiver for aging parents and, and this spouse may work full time and then they care for aging parents and you know, they have a very little time at home. So the spouse who is raising children or taking care of the household as their job maybe complaining right about this spouse working and caring for their parent and not having enough time for them yet the spouse may really lack a comprehension or an understanding of the fact that well my spouse has to go to work because that salary pays the bills and it provides our health insurance and it pays us to occasionally go out to dinner but when these complaints happen, right, you're not spending enough time with me, you're always doing everything else, right? It's actually kind of a good thing because that complaint arises from the other spouse saying, wow, I want to spend more time with you. I want to love you and, and be with you and enjoy things with you, right? So while the busy spouse, the harried spouse who's doing everything is thinking, oh, my loved one does is complain about everything that I do and they don't appreciate me, right? It's really that your spouse wants more time with you. And that's usually the reason that y'all got married or that you lived together in the first place, right? Because you wanted to spend time together. But we all know that life happens and things go crazy. So the way to turn this situation into a small win, if you're the super busy person, is to schedule time with your spouse. And it could be anything. It could be an evening walk, it could be a lunch date, a movie, having a cup of coffee, and to recognize that time as, hey, I know that you want more time with me. I know that I'm so busy. Let's take 15 minutes and cherish it and spend it together. Please recognize this time as being ours. And if you're the spouse on the other side who's seen as the complainer, right, who wants more time, express appreciation because that may actually motivate your spouse to spend more time with you. And honestly, your spouse who is so crazy busy needs a break. So what if you actually offered to do something to give them back more time so that they had some time to spend with you, even though you may or may not want to do that, right? What can you do for them to trade some time? So you know what I know, honey, it takes you to an hour to do this. Let me do that hour for you. And in response, let's spend an hour of time together. So there's this back and forth negotiation that can happen that is a small win for both of you. Okay, so then let's say um, that you are a married couple caring, and, and one of you is the caregiver for the other couple, right? 
So you're so busy that, you know, any kind of celebration of a win may be something as simple as, oh my gosh, I got the laundry done today, or I cleaned the kitchen, or, you know, we both took showers today and we got our hair done and all this kind of stuff. So in this case, because you are so busy and maybe you're a 24 seven caregiver, you gotta take the wins where you can get them. And if they are small wins, like, you know, I took a bath and I soaked in the tub or I trimmed my toenails or I got my fingernails done or I washed my hair or whatever, I took a shower, consider those to be wins. Now for other people, wins may be something totally different. It may be going out to lunch or seeing a friend or doing something that you like. Even something simple like you go out of the house in the evening and you water your flower bed or you water the garden. And I know for most of you that may sound like, how can that possibly be a win? It's another task. But truly for caregivers who never have a moment of time for themselves, getting outside of that house, outside of the four walls of that house, right? That can feel very constrictive. And sitting outside and looking up at the sky and hearing the leaves blow in the wind, that 10 or 20 minutes outside in a garden can be transformational. It can give the caregiver an amazing sense of peace and relaxation and connection with nature and the earth, which is so important for all of us. So winds are different for every person. So let's say, let's, let's talk about one more scenario. So your loved one has a chronic illness that requires a lot of oversight and appointments. So maybe they have cancer and you're going to chemotherapy or radiation treatments, or maybe they broke a hip and now they have to go to physical therapy, but you have to drive to physical therapy every single day. And so now these routines are disrupting your work life and your personal life. And it's almost like you have a job again on top of the job that you already have. <laughs> or maybe you're retired and, and you feel like the errand boy or the errand girl, or this reminds you of when you had your children and they were young and you had to run this one to football practice and this one to dance practice and piano practice, and then they were in theater and then the kids wanted to go to the movies. And it was like your whole day was like, who's driving who and keeping track of where the kids are and things like that. So if that's your life, you may be in a situation temporarily or permanently where there's just, I call it no rest for the weary, right? You are constantly exhausted. And your win actually may be something as simple as taking a nap or getting an entire night, eight hours of sleep. So regardless of where you are in this continuum of I'm constantly doing, or I'm the errand boy, or my spouse doesn't have time for me, or whatever. Make a list, write down what a small win is for you. And again, if you need to give to get, then look at what you think you can do. So the more that you can do for yourself, obviously the more joy you're gonna have in life, and the more time you will start to make for doing things that you love and things that are important for you. But you have to start somewhere. As a caregiver or the person involved with a caregiver who feels ignored, there's nothing wrong with making time for you. Too many caregivers fail to do this and they end up exhausted, burned out, and their family relationships are suffering. And it's easy to say, gosh, my you know spouse who's a caregiver just totally ignores me. Well, what can you do to give them some time back so that you can spend time together? Look at all these situations, try to figure out what the moving parts and pieces are, and make a little time for yourself. So today, figure out what a win is for you, make a list, and do something that's a win so that you feel good at the end of the day today. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. Please, again, follow, like my channel so that other people can find hope, help, and support. Go over to my website, PamelaDWilson.com, where you will find my online caregiver library, my podcast, The Caring Generation, links to my YouTube support group for caregivers. It's called The Caregiving Trap, and a lot of other helpful information. Thanks for being here. I look forward to seeing you all again soon in another video.